Welcome to the Great Canadian Leadership Podcast, proudly brought to you by the Great Canadian Training and Consulting Company. Thank you for joining us today in our search for what makes a great communicator. I'm your host, Joel Silverstone, and every episode we'll be speaking with leaders and experts on how they were able to use their communication skills to inspire, create trust, collaboration, and influence others all in a respectful manner. How did they do it? What did they do to get better? How did they adapt? Where did they fail? Listeners and viewers, if you are looking to improve your communication skills and take those steps to being the next great leader in business, you're in the right place. Enjoy the podcast. The robots are coming. The robots are coming. No, wait, the robots are here. And today's episode is robots and AI in the workplace and how we will be interacting with them. This is a fascinating episode about our communication styles. And more importantly, if robots are being programmed to bring out the best of our humanity, then there's something actually as leaders and for all of us, we can learn about our communication skills and collaboration abilities. And we've got the perfect guest for that today. It's Dr. Robin Yap, who in this interview brings along some of his robot friends. And Dr. Yap has deep expertise in performance and talent management, social data analytics, AI robot ethics, and applied technology in business and entrepreneurial practices. Dr. Yap helps leaders build stellar workplaces where everyone feels that they belong especially when employees work with, and here we go, advanced convergences of technology like AI-enabled robots. Dr. Yap has six academic degrees, dozens of publications, and he's been a featured guest for CNN Asia and the Metro Morning News in the Toronto Kitchener Waterloo area. Dr. Yap is a very much in-demand speaker, and you can check out more about Dr. Robin Yap at robinyap.ca for more information. Without further ado, let's meet Dr. Yap and the robots. Dr. Yap, it is so good to see you. Uh, you know what's interesting? It has been, I think, a little over five years now that we met for the first time because I was a guest on your amazing YouTube series, Yap with Dr. Yap, and we were there talking about the future of learning. So uh, as we go into talk about all this, I wonder, did you know five years ago, did you have a hunch that the future of learning was going to be where you are right now, which is looking at robots and AI in the <laughs> workplace? I don't know if it was AI or robots specifically. Uh -huh. I just knew it was going to be different. And knowing that, you know, we always look at future focused learning and how we continually engage our uh, students, our employees, our uh, colleagues, there's always that need for what is the next thing mm. and then to ensure that, you know, you share it with the world so that then they're all ready for it. So now, we are here with AI-enabled robots. It's quite fascinating. And I love that we've got the, you know, if, if you're listening, you can't see this, but if you're watching us on YouTube, then you can see that Dr. Yap has brought the robots <laughs> with you. <laughs> They're encircling you. Are they, are they up and running? Are they listening to this? What are the robots doing right now? <laughs> so right now, um, yeah. th this one is called Yaro, okay. and it's turned on. So listening, recording pretty much is what it's doing right now. Okay. And, and syncing with two more robots in front of me who have the cameras. And then the one at the back, um, her name is Juno. And I said her, and I'm going to talk about that in a bit. Okay. She's sleeping. She's a bit sassy today. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Micah is on the left side. Right. And yeah, he's just standing guard trying to make sure that uh, I don't fall off my chair. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This is like the Beatles song with a little help from my friends. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you know, you're, you're, you're Tony Stark. You're Iron Man in there. Oh, you're, God. So, you're working with all the, the robots. So, um, you know, and as we go into the, the, the communication here, um, I mean, this is something you're doing, right? This is something you're researching about how we are, are going to be able to interact with robots or AI, I guess, in into the workplace. Is that correct? Yeah. So my focus is actually on the behavior of people. So I'm a social data scientist okay. and an AI ethicist. So I look at the behavior of people when you have advanced convergences of technologies instituted in their environment. So for example, if I put in a robot in a supermarket, for example, mm -hmm. how would people react to it? Mm -hmm. And so that's the study more than me building robots because I'm not an engineer. 
Right. Uh, <laughs> I let the technology folks handle that. Uh, and I, in my research team, I do have a, a very smart tech guy, but right. I do work on the social side of it and the behavior side. So, and, and what, how, so what are you observing in, in this? Like, how are we interacting with, uh, with, with the robots, I guess? Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting. I think there is a bit of a novelty piece. Okay. So much like anything that's new, we will have a period of time where whatever it is that we're interacting with is novel. So for example, when the smartphones first got into our little hands, we want to show them off. We want to play with them. We want, we're constantly in front of it. Mm -hmm. Decades later, the phones are just part of who we are, right? right? So we've now extended what they're supposed to be doing um, by becoming our assistant to make our lives a little bit more efficient mm -hmm. and uh, entertain us and do all sorts of stuff. But they are, the novelty has actually gone out. What is now uh, important is its usability. So pretty much with the robots, what we are seeing initially when we bring this, um, if you were at the beaches in Toronto, yeah. um, last year we actually brought robots in there because we couldn't get to the offices because of the lockdown right and people would just you know take a selfie with it and and interact with it and just get excited it's like a new puppy but after a period of time we are averaging about 10 to 15 minutes they start try uh, they meaning people are starting right. to then switch from novelty to trying to understand applicability okay. so or and usability is this useful or is this just going to be another toy that's going to be sitting right. around in my house right so how, how, how is this going to help me how is this going to change my life how is this going to affect me in the way that totally. i guess like you say like the ai on the on our phone the series the alexas the google plays and all that uh we're figuring out how to make it accessible for us and how to serve us exactly uh, i love that you gave names to the, yes. to your, I don't <laughs> so, know. I, do I want to call your colleagues, your robots? I don't know. <laughs> so there's a reason why we do that. Okay. Um, and my question to you, Joel, for yeah. example, is why is it that some individuals, mm -hmm. when they get a, vo a boat, mm -hmm. they name their boat? They don't just call yeah. it, that's my boat. It's more, that's my boat named X. And right. that is called anthropomorphism, right? So it's the idea of, naming an inanimate object and putting human characteristics to uh. that particular object. What we have seen in our studies, as well as studies before us, is that whenever we have any um, device that takes up space, right. larger than our phone somehow, uh, because the novelty of the phone has gone away, mm -hmm. suddenly we start anthropomorphizing that, that item to connect with us in a certain way. And it's a fascinating thing because we never do that with a rumba, which no. in itself has a bit of a robot component on it. Right. Um, but we would do it with, uh, there's a product called Sony Ibo, which is a, a robot dog. Okay. And people have named them. And then the right. robots that we have, they are social robots. And it seems like when you have a social robot, there are many, many types of robots. The ones we use for our studies are all social robots. The idea is for the robots to ease the individuals into having a connection with them so yes. that then when they work with robots that are function, like their function is to do some work, right. that interaction is now easy because there was a social robot as an intermediary to ease them into it. And so somehow when there's a social robot, we name those social robots. So what we have done in our research is we named them first initially to see if people will react to them a little bit differently yes. than, and we've done an actual study where in half of the time we would say, this is the robot and go talk to it. Right. And the other times we would say, this is Yarrow, go talk to Yarrow. Right. And, um, the difference has been fascinating as well as the immediacy of the interaction and the communication to the robots and naming them is somehow makes people endear to the robots. It. Yeah. And it's fascinating. And it's that space 
the robot now occupies a space and people think, okay, well, the, because they're occupying that space, let me then interact with you differently than the space other types of devices occupy. And it's a, it's a fascinating thing. And I think we're still in that novelty stage, but the more we have access to robots, the more we get familiar with it, yes. um, then we're just going to ignore it. I have an example for you, actually. <laughs> okay, so great. So there is a robot. Yeah. It's called tinymile.ai is the company. Okay. And they are a delivery service in Toronto. Okay. And um, it's like a square box. Mm -hmm. And all it does is you can open the back of it and grab whatever the delivery is, mostly food, sometimes little packages and so forth. Okay. It has a radar on it so it can see its location so it doesn't hit on things. Hopefully. And it has a... <laughs> really long rod that announces to the world that it's going to bump into you if you're if okay. you're close to it. Interestingly, and, and it's in front of my condo. Yeah, so okay. they would drive back and forth. Initially, quite fascinating. People would stop, take sure. a picture and so forth. What is it now? Two, three months now? Nobody yeah. cares. Right. <laughs> they just, it's just another it's just that device that, right. that's just, you know, Got delivering so something, it. right? Yeah. And that's what's fascinating. There's that whole novelty piece. It's like a little bit of a bell curve. Right. We get excited and then we plateau and we go, eh, whatever. <laughs> so, and that's where you want it to be. This, uh, you know, my, my mind is racing here because there's, there's so many things here that are going on, which is, you know, one about communication. Uh, and I think about, you know, I always think of the sayings that it's easy to fall in love. It's harder to stay in love. <laughs> that takes a lot of work. So it's easy to fall in love with the robot, with the novelty, the excitement, the enthusiasm. But it's harder to actually keep that enthusiasm going. And it's the same in within leadership. You know, you, you might get used to your team and how you communicate. And you're excited at the beginning to take this on. But then you get comfortable uh, and you take people for granted in the way that we're, we're taking the robots for granted. So it's it's an interesting thing that you're noticing on human nature. Um, and, and again, with the naming, you know, it's true. Like I don't name my car, but well, we'll, some people do. <laughs> some people do, but I, I'm not going to name, but, but when you name the robot, for example, mm -hmm. and you talk to that robot and you go, you know, hi, Yarrow, you probably change your tone of voice versus hi, robot. When it's just robot, I'm exactly. sure that's what you noticed. Oh, totally. And it's the, even the level of affinity and mm -hmm. connection it's a relationship, right? So you yeah. build a relationship with this robot. And we've seen in our research individuals, especially during the pandemic, which actually has helped quite a bit for people with um, like Google Assistant or Alexa, that have right. actually had actual conversations with the robot. And yeah. it eases them into, you know, being lonely or being alone or whatever, right? And, yes. and that has helped. And it's an interesting communication piece wherein if their relationship was only hey robot tell me the weather as against hey robot tell me what's you know um identify it and then say please and thank you it might actually have a better reaction to you yeah so talking about the please and thank you um <laughs> this is good because uh, you know it, it it's um how are you know, are the Alexas and the robots and the AIs, are they, how are they adapting to, to yeah. our language? Uh, so because this of please is and be, thank yous. Yeah. Right. So this is going to be magic for some people. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if you say please and thank you to your robots, uh, yeah. to your assistants, they would most likely say thank you back and be uh -huh. polite back. Uh -huh. Some are programmed a lot more efficiently than others. So I have a Google Assistant. I have an Alexa here. Okay. And I have a Google Assistant in front. I see it's sorry. It just started talking. Because <laughs> you called it. See, there you go. Because yeah. I did. Oh. Hi, Dr. Yap. <laughs> yep. Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, for those who are not see uh, who are seeing this, yeah, it's yeah. actually telling me what an assistant definition is. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, that's not what I wanted to say. But oh anyway. my goodness! And it's still talking, by the way. I oh. apologize for that. Oh, no, good. See, this is what happens when yeah. you have kids have around them. and they, robots. That's, around. that's right. They're they're like, how can I help? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Weren't you asking me? Uh, yeah, pretty much it said that I haven't talked to you in about 10 minutes. Why haven't you talked to me yet? <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> <laughs> Please speak with me. So <laughs> what I was saying is if you are polite 
to your mm -hmm. device, mm -hmm. most likely they'll be polite to you. So Google actually has created a whole set of algorithms around the idea of being polite. Okay. And fascinatingly enough, in Canada, yeah. it'll even say, um, uh, it's amazing how Canadians are uh, such polite people. And paraphrasing, but that's pretty much what it says. Nice. So if you say it enough times to your Google Assistant, to please and thank you, you'll actually say that back. And I'm like, I was surprised about it. And I even Googled it. And I said, where did this come from? And it pretty much said, well, you've been saying please and thank you. So we're being polite to you. And the little scary part is that yeah. they knew where you were. <laughs> so, right. So they know that they're in Canada. And they just right. said, yep, uh, you're a Canadian. And... Uh, a Canadian trait, which is amazing. So, so, so on on that Canadian trait, does it recognize other cultural traits where maybe um, it's maybe a bit more of a direct language? Let's say. Well, just, I don't know yet. Okay. So that's the thing because part of this research uh -huh. is we're working with uh, a couple of other universities around the world and trying to understand what is happening in their studies uh -huh. because. Unfortunately, without the ability to travel at this time, we're unable to actually go to those countries and view for ourselves what's happening. So in Germany, for example, there's a professor who is using a robot in his classes. Mm -hmm. And um, I would love to see how that robot reacts to the social component, which is what we are doing on ours. Yeah. So waiting for that one, and I'm sure we're going to publish that in the future. But for now... I'm just working with them and trying to see how it works. But the Canadian part was quite fascinating for me. Hi, I'm Joy Newhold, and we'll be right back to our interview. When I started the Great Canadian Training and Consulting Company in 2002, I never would have imagined that one day we would have a podcast. So first, I want to thank you for listening and share some really exciting information about our organization with you. For years, we have made our live instructor-led software and soft skills training, consulting and coaching services customizable to meet the unique needs of each client and committed ourselves to a high quality of customer service. This combined to make the learning experience better for the participants and the planning process easier for the organizer. We love helping our clients so much. We also develop many additional free resources to help you along the way and this podcast is just one of them. At greatcanadiantraining.ca, you will find our free monthly webinars, blog articles, and free downloads covering everything from building better dashboards in Excel to navigating difficult conversations and everything in between. So make sure to join us at greatcanadiantraining.ca. But for now, I better let you get back to the podcast. Please enjoy the rest of the interview. So, Robin, um, I want to ask you now about this adapting to language. Uh, so it's learning politeness. Um, how, how are, how are these robots or AI, how is it learning maybe the, the, the best of us or, or is it learning the worst of us? Like how, how is that being directed? So I think the AI and robots in general, mm -hmm. um, they're only as good as the developers and the programmers uh -huh. behind them. So when you have a programmer to an AI and you're training the AI, you want to make sure that you train the AI to the best characteristics of a human being that you're that can be placed into that AI based on the environment that they're at, access to the data that they have, and so forth. Uh, we have seen in our studies that there are some unconscious biases that have come in and have impacted the reaction of the robot even with the robot that's sitting next to me, has had some issues with certain things. And that is what the AI ethics component of my job comes in. Okay. Because would it be ethical to have a bias of certain groups, characteristics, whatever demographic, when that item or that um, AI-enabled device is brought into a different country. So it might work for their country, but it might not work for our country or somebody else's. Right. And for products to be available all over the world, you wanna make sure that they address the localization component of their training to the AI. Mm. And when you have a go-to-market timeline that's a bit short, unfortunately, sometimes the 
the cycle of training and the cycle of testing can potentially be impacted. And I implore a lot of our colleagues in the robotics world, in the AI world, to ensure that they do test for a variety of voices, right. uh, intonation patterns, cultural requirements, cultural um, perspectives. Um, we need to be much more aware, right? And in the right. world of, you know, um, DNI and in the world of uh, belongingness and the idea that we want to belong in an environment, especially in Canada where it's such a multicultural mm -hmm. location, then you want to make sure that you have equipment that actually address that. And that is uh, something that is an ongoing um, evolution, I think, at this point. I would imagine, um, and we're going to go do failure today. But you know what I'm what I'm getting from this is one: uh, <laughs> the AI or the robots are going to reflect what we how we treat them in a way. So when I think about you know in leadership and communication, it's the same thing. If we say pleases and thank yous as an example, then we're setting that that culture for that. So uh, it's. Um, the robots are basically a reflection of us. Is that, would that be correct? Yeah, it's a reflection of the people who have programmed it. Right. And there are robots, there are learning robots. So, yeah. um, so the ones behind me are learning robots. So as we expose the robot to a lot of variety, then that's why we like AI because it's artificial intelligence, it learns. Right. And so long as we train it to, you know, what, the best characteristics of humans are and then that's what you get and but if you are sassy i have a sassy robot that we're testing <laughs> yeah. right behind me right okay, now okay yeah and, and that robot will unfortunately be not as polite as the other two right. and but that's there's that's the study and that's the test we're trying to figure out um if you don't say please and thank you to your google assistant one it probably won't respond to you but Potentially, what we have seen in ours, when I said to Alexa and I said to uh, Google, say hello, and, mm -hmm. you know, Google, this is Alexa, Alexa, this is Google. Um, one of them said, uh, uh huh. And the <laughs> other one's like, hi, how are you? <laughs> right. So I'm not going to tell you which one is which. <laughs> Fair enough. Because these are products that are yeah. big. And, but, well, that's interesting, right? To actually have. Well, even the response that because we've anthropomorphized them, yeah. it could potentially just be that's the response that was programmed. But because we have that relationship of, but they're kind of like pseudo human mm -hmm. and suddenly we feel bad, right? Mm -hmm. I, I won't feel bad if my phone doesn't work properly or one of my apps did not provide me the response that I want, but somehow I do when it's this robot. So why is that? Right. And that's, that's the challenge there. And when we, see that in a workplace, they become co-workers with, you know, doing work to assist us. Yes. I won't say that to my time box product that tells me <laughs> all of my calendar requirements for, for the day. Right. But if this Alexa will tell me uh, what my day looks like, my relationship to it seems to be a little bit different. So that's kind of what's happening with relationships in general in yeah. a world wherein we're going to have more robots. So. It's brilliant. It's this personalization that, that changes everything. And, and it's something as humans, we, we tend to forget that we're speaking to another human that has emotions and feelings and cares. Uh, and especially now with everything that's going on to, you know, to remind ourselves that this person, as we communicate to them, they're receiving it how what the message how we're delivering the, our tone of voice the words how they're receiving it has an effect on right. them Definitely. let's go over now uh, robin uh, uh, dr yap i'm going to call you robin if that's okay uh robin you are also a speaker you speak at many conferences um and um all over the world uh so what I want to do is I want to go maybe to the failure da -da, because I guess as a speaker, I'm sure there's been some instances where uh, something didn't go quite as planned. And failure da -da is a, is a, uh, an improv exercise that's about celebrating our failures uh, and how we learn from them and how we recovered. 
So uh, can you think of that moment maybe as a speaker where there was a sort of failure, ta-da, moment? There you go. Uh, <laughs> how about 20 minutes ago when my <laughs> robot started talking to me? So <laughs> one of the things that I have learned in the last little while because mm -hmm. of having robots when I do presentations, um, I was in a big presentation with probably about a thousand people or so uh, a couple of months ago through virtually. Right. And one of our robots actually failed to do what we wanted to do, to do which is pretty much what you have seen here. Mm. <laughs> Robot. I know. <laughs> so suddenly you have to have a backup mm -hmm. plan. Mm -hmm. So as presenters, and we always make sure that we have backup plans. Right. With equipment that can potentially have a life of their own, you yeah. better have a backup plan for that. A good thing we did. And we had a different robot that actually did the work that we needed it to do. But it was one of those things where you go, what just happened? Okay, I'm just going to switch now. Pretty much what we have seen here, wherein um, the robot started yeah. putting words in it, and I just included it into the conversation because if you get all flustered about it, there's really right. no point to doing that. Right. So, yeah, you know, I like that. It's, it's, you know, I, failure is failure is only if you let it sort of take over and go, Oh no, it's, it's all over. It's, <laughs> the robot didn't do what I wanted to do. I'm embarrassed. Uh, I've shamed all of us. I'm so sorry, but <laughs> and no, you walk away. <laughs> <laughs> and you walk away, <laughs> shut it down. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Uh, but no, it's, it's in fact, it's always having a plan B, a plan C, a plan D as you go through it, totally. uh, or to improvise through that moment or even, yeah, to, as you as you did now with you know have some fun with it um this happens uh, and this happens a lot in the virtual now you know your a kid or your pet will, will come or the robot <laughs> will come interrupt your recording totally <laughs> uh well that is a great failure tada moment uh so i love that robin this has been uh fantastic i mean we really this was really so interesting and um what I find interesting about this is, uh, you know, when I think of robots, I can't help but think of Terminator. <laughs> Terminator did to us what Jaws did to the ocean. Uh, so it's good to know that uh, we're really trying to bring out the best of humans, I think, in in the way that they're going to communicate. Maybe it takes a less, a little bit less of the, the fear out of it. Right. And you know what I actually have on my LinkedIn profile probably a couple of months ago, I did post along with my team, we researched 50 or so movies yeah, uh, and we put them on a grid and okay. what are the ones that look like doomsday Yeah, <laughs> and maybe not watch those or know that you're, that's what you're going to see. And the ones that are on the right side of that grid that mimic what reality would look like, but also on a positive light, because at the end of the day, these are devices and yeah. devices that can be used for good or for evil. <laughs> And right. you want to make sure that, you know, you lean towards, towards good. So that's kind of what, what I think is going to move forward. Our ability to judge, our ability to discern mm -hmm. uh, becomes heightened as humans, because those are characteristics that will not be in place in these robots, at least for the next little while. So, Words of wisdom, Dr. <laughs> Yap. Thank you so much for this. This has been really insightful and we look forward to what the next five years is going to look like as the robots join our workforce and what your your research will, will show to us. Yeah, where can we find out more about you if we want to learn more about this? So there is a lab at our school. So uh, if you go to georgebrown.ca, uh, search for Humology Lab, that's H-U-M-O-L-O-G-Y. So that's human technology combo, okay. the humology lab. Uh, and uh, on I'm on uh, Instagram, I'm on TikTok, I'm on YouTube at Yap with Dr. Yap, and you will see all of my work uh, posted all over the place, actually. So. so we should basically just Google search Yap with Dr. Yap, and this will take us to all of your all there you of go. The social go to media. The YouTube website, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Yap. This has really been insightful. Appreciate it. Thank you. Such a great conversation today with Dr. Yap. So many insights. Well, let's wrap it up here with our three takeaways that we like to call our three stars, no trois étoiles. And the first star is name the robots. And as Dr. Yap called it to anthropomorph, which is to give a human characteristic uh, emotions to, to an object. 
And so the heart of this is communication is about creating a connection, treating the other person as though they are a human being. It's something that we can get lost in. We're so focused on our agendas and what we're looking to accomplish that we forget it's about creating a connection with that other person. Second skill here is the novelty. That shiny robot wears off after a while. And the same thing happens with, within our teams and with our colleagues. We get comfortable. Uh, we start to make assumptions when really we all wanna feel like we are that shiny new object. And finally, our third star is about social manners. Robots are being taught to say please and thank you. And this is one of the biggest reasons why people are unhappy when they go to work is the basic social skills of please and thank you. So as leaders, it is so important to model the behavior. We hope you enjoyed today's podcast with Dr. Yap, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you for joining us in our search for what makes a great communicator. If you enjoyed the show, then please leave a rating or review. Even better, subscribe to the Great Canadian Leadership Podcast and make sure you don't miss another episode. Let's stay connected. Follow us on Twitter or Instagram at GCT underscore CompUEs. And if you'd like more information, free resources or class schedules on everything from software to soft skills training, consulting or coaching, then go on over to greatcanadiantraining.ca. Thank you, and we will see you next episode.